In a metal, we can think of the uh, valence electrons to be completely ionized and free to move in the lattice uh, that is forming an electron C. So uh, we can look at the uh, quantum mechanical description of these free electrons in the lattice in order to understand uh, how we can calculate the susceptibility of Pauli paramagnets. So, uh, first of all, we start with the atoms in a metal have a completely ionized uh, free valence electrons. So these electrons are free to move in the lattice. Uh, that is due to uh, the ionization is due to thermal kicks. So thermal energy is enough to release them into uh, the electron C. So forming an electron C. Now for a free electron uh, we have potential energy is equal to zero. If we write Schrodinger's equation, this is going to be familiar from your quantum mechanics class where we study the uh, uh, electron in a three-dimensional box. We have minus h bar square over twice mass of the electron del square applied to the wave function is equal to energy times the wave function as a function of r so we have no potential energy potential energy is zero so uh, consider the crystal as a cube the crystal in which the electrons are flowing with edge length L then uh, using periodic boundary conditions we can find the uh, wave functions using periodic boundary conditions uh, the wave functions psi k of r are e to the i k dot r uh, times an amplitude a. Now here the wave vector k has components kx, k, uh, ky and kz given by 2 n pi over l where n starts from 1, 2, 3 etc. because n equals to 0 would imply uh, you would have uh, basically an electron with zero energy and that would be uh, violating uncertainty principle. Okay, so uh, this wave function uh, basically satisfies the boundary condition at one uh, corner uh, at zero and at the other side at x equals to l for example you should have the same wave function or you can say that the psi k of r is equal to psi k of r plus l. So it's periodic with l. So if you write this condition, you see that e to the i k r plus l is equal to e to the i k r. This means e to the i k l must be equal to 1 so that k is equal to 2 n pi over l. So this condition is obtained from um, periodicity requirement. And since we have L a very large number, uh, it's the dimension of the crystal, K is practically a continuous variable. It's practically continuous because we will have a delta K, uh, which is 2 pi over L, very small when L is so large. 
the free electron energies, the corresponding energies, are given by h bar square k square over twice mass of the electron, which is h bar square over twice mass of the electron kx square plus ky square plus kz square. And here remember that h bar is h over 2 pi. It is reduced Planck's, Planck's constant. Planck's constant is 6.63 10 to minus 34 joule seconds. It's Planck's constant. The momentum of the electron is h divided by lambda, uh, the de Broglie relationship, which is h over 2 pi uh, times 2 pi over lambda. You can see that this is h bar times k, so that the energy levels are momentum squared divided by twice the mass of the electron. So there is only kinetic energy, there is no potential energy. So if we uh, plot energy as a function of k for these electrons in the one-dimensional uh, case, you see a parabolic relationship because it pro it's proportional to uh, k square. This is supposed to be uh, symmetric. Uh, the energy as a function of k relationship is the dispersion uh, relation how energy changes with uh, momentum and in order to calculate the uh, Pauli susceptibility Pauli paramagnetism susceptibility we need to find the number of electrons close to the Fermi level that will reverse their spin when a magnetic field is applied so the question we need to ask is how many electrons close to the Fermi level EF will reverse their spins? We need to answer this question because this will uh, lead us to calculate the Pauli uh, susceptibility of metals. Okay, so uh, we talked about the energy bands forming uh, when the atoms are brought together. We have uh, bonding and anti-bonding orbitals. In the case of uh, metals, these valence electrons uh, will be uh, released into the lattice because the thermal energy is enough to break their bonds from the uh, atoms and these electrons will act as an electron C that is moving inside a crystal which you can think of as a cube with edge length L. So uh, th considering these electrons to be completely free, free electrons, so we're neglecting interactions between the uh, nuclei at the atomic sites and the electrons or electron-electron interactions then the wave functions are a e to the i k dot r, where k is discretized. It's in units of 2 n pi over l, which comes from the fact that the, the, uh, the electron wave function has to obey periodic boundary conditions. It's supposed to vanish at 0 and l because the electron doesn't exist outside the crystal. So these periodic boundary conditions give me discrete k values. However, since l is very large, you can think of k as a continuous variable practically. The free electron energies, if you substitute the wave function into Schrodinger's equation, you find that the energy levels are given by h bar square k square over 2m. Since the momentum of the free electron is h bar k, it's also p squared over 2m, which is the kinetic energy, which is basically a, a result of having only kinetic energy term. The E versus K relationship is parabolic. It's called the dispersion relation. And our main goal is to calculate how many electrons close to the Fermi level will reverse their spin to contribute to Pauli paramagnetism. 